Good afternoon. Welcome to the Orange County Legislature's organization meeting. Please turn off all cell phones, electronic devices, and would everyone please stand for a moment of silence and a pledge to the flag. gentlemen your first order of business today is to elect a chair for the year 2015 I will now accept nominations thank you madam acting chair <laughs> last year I was asked to do uh, Melissa's majority leader uh, introduction and thought that nobody would ever ask me to do something like this again Steve didn't learn from that or he wanted some entertainment. Maybe he's just a glutton for punishment. Most legislative chairmen are. After all this, the first meeting of the year, maybe he just wanted some levity. Picking newspapers makes for a boring afternoon. Eve Brescia is known around here as an elder statesman, first elected to this body at approximately the age of 12. He has a strong background in economic development and job creation at the IDA, and he learned leadership as mayor of Montgomery. He wanted to run for dog catcher in Montgomery, but he learned from the Attorney General's office that it would be a conflict. No man should have control of the people and the dogs. <laughs> Steve likes to bring his sons to the office. At least they know how to behave and actually listen when he speaks, unlike the rest of us. It's fun to watch him go from his office to the committee room and try to maintain order. As chairman, Steve looks to find common ground. He's a good consensus builder. He appointed members of all three political parties to committee chairmanships, which I don't think has ever happened before. He started a collaborative government training program, which I'm sure, which I'm not sure has worked, but at least we know where those of us are using the skills learned and who skipped the class and who may have showed up late or didn't listen. Steve reaches out for suggestions and is a good listener. He doesn't take disagreement personally. We can disagree on particular issues and move to the next matter. Let's face it, it's impossible to get 21 people to agree on anything, and it's hard to get 14 on board. But Steve has worked hard to move us forward. I'm confident that Steve's leadership will get us on the path of progress. Tough times call for strong leadership, and I know Steve is up to the challenge. It's my honor to nominate Steve Brescia as chairman of the Orange County Legislature, and I hope all my colleagues join me in keeping Steve as our chairman. Do I have a second? The name of L. Stephen Brescia has presented as chair for the year 2015. Are there any other nominations? There being no other nominations, I now close nominations. I cast one ballot for L. Stephen Brescia as chairman of the Orange County Legislature. I have a second? Second. I All do have something to say. <laughs> Thank you. Well said, Kevin. Observing Steve Bresch in his role as chairman of the Orange County Legislature for the past year reinforced my decision to support Steve in his position for 2014. I found him to be accommodating and receptive to all legislators, regardless of party affiliation. New legislator, he has been informative and helpful to me whenever I sought information on a topic or past history on previous or long standing issues. His lengthy tenure in the legislature has prepared him for the leadership role he is seeking. 
Therefore, I would like to second the nomination of E. Stephen Brescia as chairman of the 2015 Orange County Legislature. All in favor? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Here. I hope if Steve gets reelected that he works out these uh, microphones. Right? Uh, this is loud today, isn't it? Then we've got a caucus had a, a conversation about how we were going to approach this this year's leadership. I was going to say fight or selection might be a better term. <clears throat> and we could either strive to carve out a, a separate identity for the Democratic Caucus and to accentuate our principles, because we all know that there are partisan differences, or would we set partisanship aside and try to rally in a unified legislature in order to act as an effective counterweight to the executive branch? And we unanimously feel, at least I think it's unanimous, we'll find out soon enough, that the best chance for us to work as an effective counterweight to express our constituents is to try to work together. And that's why I'll be voting for Steve for re-election. All in favor? Anyone opposed? L. Stephen Bresch has been elected chairman of the Orange County Legislature for the year 2015. Mr. DeSalvo, you have a statement on the majority leader? <laughs> yeah, we're still writing it down, trying to figure out what to say. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Jean. Um, I was asked to make a few comments about the majority leader selection that our caucus uh, picked this year. And um, and I won't speak for the entire caucus, although the, this individual was unanimously picked by our caucus, which I think is a very, very good thing. Uh, but I'll try to speak for the newbies in our caucus. Uh, first year in Orange County government, at times it's been frustrating, um, but we've been able to work together, which I think in the best fashion for the county. And Melissa Bonasek was who we unanimously chose to be our majority leader. And she's been done a terrific job in, in my first year uh, as a legislator. Uh, very welcoming, very effective with other leadership in Orange County, and very effective in the caucus. And although she doesn't teach kindergarten, sometimes our caucus acts like kindergarten. But all in all, she's done a terrific job, and I appreciate her asking me to say a few words on behalf of her. Thank you. Mr. Berkman. <clears throat> I'm not sure which comment I like better, the kindergarten or the dogs? <laughs> One or the other. But uh, I'm proud to announce that the Democratic Caucus has unanimously selected Chris Ekus is our minority leader for the year. Chris has exceptional uh, leadership abilities. He's a man of integrity. He's a man of experience. He's an educator. 
And I think he possesses all the fine qualities that an outstanding leader needs to have. And I'm most of all impressed on his willingness to consider all of our caucus members' opinions with, with a respectful ear. So best of luck to you, Chris. I'm proud, proud of you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, my caucus appointed me as leader of the Independent Caucus. But I got to tell you, it was a sad moment for me because uh, during the year, there's one thing that we, we noticed happened, and that was a lot of raucous behavior and disagreement and fighting. And I was really hoping that we'd get some people leaving their appropriate caucus and come over to my caucus. And maybe we'd then have enough people to really have a vote. But, you know, Nagas Nagas didn't move. Curly Dilly didn't move. Mr. Berkman didn't move. I thought, one of these has got to come over and make this a real vote. It didn't happen, so they're stuck with me. I'm the leader. <laughs> First off, I'd like to ask everyone to rise and give a moment of silence for our departed former governor, Mario Cuomo. Please be seated. I didn't write one note down, so I didn't want to be presumptuous. Uh, but I was hopeful that you would re-elect me as your chairman, and I thank my colleagues for doing so. Um, I thank Kevin Hines for that nice speech, and my friend John Vero as well. Um, I just have to say that my mother and sister would probably disagree with Kevin about my boys listening to me. <laughs> so, yeah, maybe at the office a little bit. but. Um, I don't have a big crowd here tonight. today. I have my sister, Stacy. thank you for holding the Bible, bringing the Bible, and my mother, Phyllis, for being here. Appreciate it. I, I did want to say a few things. Um, I think we have accomplished a, a few measures this year. Um, you know, I called in the, let, in the letter that I sent to each legislator, I said it was a tumultuous year. It was definitely topsy-turvy. Um, I'd like to call it the year of spinning wheels because that seems like what we did a lot of spinning wheels and I'm a, li a little upset with the county exec right now um, I was very upset on January 2nd some of you heard my ire uh, Jim DeSalvo by text John Bureau by phone Melissa and Chris a little bit by phone um, I was very upset very upset about the veto the other day and not because of the county exec stance, but the timing and when it came about. You know, we spent three or four months on that asset forfeiture law. Everybody had good points. There were three, excuse me, let me catch my breath. It was about three or four months of discussion on that issue. And that issue didn't emanate from the legislature. It emanated from the district attorney. And there were probably two or three Republicans who didn't have a warm and fuzzy about that legislation. And a few of us other Republicans supported it because the DA supported it. And the majority of the law enforcement community in the county supported it. So that's why we moved forward. And we probably had 10 hours of discussion in committees and on this floor Three times at public safety, Kevin told me. I thought it was two, but it was three. Two times at rules, Dennis, or was it three? Do you remember? Two or three. Two or three. And on this floor. And all the county exec had to do was tell us that he had a little bit of doubt about that asset forfeiture law. Not at the last minute. Not at the last minute after the, his public hearing. Because there was enough public comments made at this legislature. And we wouldn't have spun our wheels. The Republicans wouldn't have moved forward with that. Because both sides had good arguments about the case, both sides, and it was an entire waste of our time. Ten hours of our time. If the county executive came to one of those committee meetings and spent one hour of that ten hours, one hour of that ten hours, he would have appreciated that argument a little bit more. So I'm very upset with the county exec, and I'm a person that has supported the county exec probably more than anybody on this stage in the last year, and I'll continue to do so when he's correct, when I feel he's right. But he was wrong on that score just as he was wrong on the score with the sales tax. Every, there are people out there saying, the sales tax is, should be a last resort. 
Well, layoffs should be a last resort. The property tax should be a last resort. Everything should be a last resort. But we're going to have to come up with some solutions, and we're going to do it together, and we're going to have to do it with the county exec. There's going to have to be collaboration and communication on his part, on his part. And I hope he hears this loud and clear. He's not here today. But I'm sure Langdon's going to tell him, and Harry's going to tell him, and Wayne's going to tell him. You know, if he wants cooperation, he's got to give cooperation. And don't spin our wheels. The public is not stupid. The legislators are not foolish. Our time is too valuable. We spent more time at budget hearings this year than I've, had, I've seen in 21 years here. And it was good discussion, good debate, give and take. And, you know, we got some things done. Um, I took a tour earlier with Nikki Rowe and Jeff Berkman downstairs. IT is moving along well. BOE will be moving along well. 1841 Courthouse will be moving along well. We got the early retirement incentive passed. <clears throat> and we're going to get other things passed. But we need to communicate with the county exec. We're going to have to debate here today, and it's, it sucks. Excuse my French. It sucks. Because we're going to be talking about a person that's qualified to do a job, but it's the process. Earlier in the year, we had a process that we didn't agree with, with the uh, director of Veterans, Veterans Affairs, excuse me. And we thought we sent a loud and clear message that we <coughs> want to be involved with appointments. Not all legislators, two or three to make a recommendation. Two or three. And we thought that message was heard, but it wasn't heard because now we have to make an appointment here at the midnight hour. If we don't, it's going to be affirmed anyway. There's no reflection on the person that, that's going to be appointed because we all have a lot of faith in her and she's going to do a very good job. But we should have been involved with the process. And I, I know I'll hear an argument on the other side, but it, it really stinks. It really stinks that we're here at the midnight hour when we should have been involved with the interview process even if the state had to approve that person, we still should have been involved. Two or three legislators get some input, go through the committee process. But the committee process is being ignored. Ignored. You know? I would like to see the county exec come to two or three meetings every month, committee meetings, and stay for the entire meeting, not leave after 15 minutes. Not leave after 15 minutes. Okay? I don't care what Ed Day does in Rockland County. I don't care what Marcus Molinaro does in Dutchess County. And I don't care what Mike Hine does in Ulster County. He should come to at least two or three of those. There's eight statutory meetings every month, and occasionally there's a special meeting. Eight statutory meetings. Come for the entire meeting on a few of them. If he came to rules or public safety, he would have seen the importance of the asset forfeiture, and then he could have expressed his doubt right then and there, instead of wasting our time. You know, the part-time legislators, as some of us are called, we spend a lot of time at those committee meetings, and we take it very importantly. Very seriously. I know I'm going off, but I'm going to say a few things because it's not going to be a long, long meeting. Okay, I hope you send that message to him. Harry, I know you're there, and I know you're there, Wayne, but he should come to at least two or three a month. Two or three a month where there's serious issues. Then you guys come to the other ones and bring back the message. All right? I still have respect for Steve, but this is what we expect. The people's business is done at the committees. We work by the committee system. That's where the important business is done. Today on the floor, we culminate that committee process with a vote, but that's where the business is done, at the committees. So come to two or three meetings a month and send you guys to the others, okay? Then you, want, then you will enhance communication. Then you will enhance communication. That's one way. I talked to the three party leaders. We're gonna stick to one meeting a month, maybe more, in the chairman's office with four or five legislators of each party and Michael Amo, and we'll discuss things that we have concerns and try to find consensus and try to get to yes. Okay? We'll try to do that. The county exec will be invited to each and every month. Come yourself or don't, come, don't send anybody else. No offense to you, gentlemen. Okay? If we feel there's an important issue and he can't make it, I may not even make it one month or two months, but the eight or nine legislators will be there and we'll try to come to some consensus. I think we're going to move forward. I really do. We will move forward as one, even if we have disagreements. Okay? There's going to be disagreements on asset forfeiture, on the government center. I'm hopeful that we're finally going to move ahead on the government center. I think we made the right choice a while ago, and we have to stick to it. Stick to our guns. Don't waffle and equivocate all over the place. All right? 
Don't exactly call me, but I was just upset the other day, and I've calmed down quite a bit. But I was very upset, just because of the process, and because of the time that we spent on that wall, that, that we didn't have to. And, and, and some people said, oh, he really gave it to the Republicans. Well, he gave it to the Democrats, too, because that was a debate that you guys didn't have to have, and we wouldn't have had with you if we knew it was going to be vetoed, because we knew it was a slim margin to begin with. Am I not right? And one more thing I'm going to say about spinning the wheels. The governor did it to us, you know? I feel bad for the governor because he lost his father, but that was, that was a colossal waste of time, what he did to Orange County. And most people on this stage, if not all, agree that Sullivan County should have gotten one casino. They deserved it. They were in the fight a long time. The legislation was geared that way. But once they put us into the equation, you know, I wouldn't have had a problem if they didn't put us in the equation, but they put us in the equation. And the governor got millions of casino donations for his campaign and millions of dollars in application fees for the state of New York. And each le there was legislators pitted against each other in the, in the room, professionally. But, you know, it was time that planning boards and village boards and city councils and, and town boards didn't have to spend. For what? That was time that we could have been spent on the budget. I mean, there's so many issues that we need to deal with this year to try to save money, whether it's layoffs or taxes or whatever. No, but we have to work together. And I think the county exec will heed my speech here today. He might get pissed off at me, but I'm sorry. You know, we're not in a pissing contest. Excuse my French ladies, I'm sorry, but you know, we have to get business done and we have to save money. And we have to work together. And I'm hopeful that we can do that. So let's try to start out this new year on the right foot and move ahead. Okay? My name is Rodriguez. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> wow. I knew we elected the right guy to the chairmanship of this legislature. <laughs> and I have that uh, voter enrollment form for when you want to change parties. Um, I want to start out by thanking my Democratic caucus for unanimously electing me into this position. I'm really excited. Uh, Mr. Brescia was correct. We've already had several discussions, and they've been great discussions. We didn't agree on everything, but they've been great discussions. And I am looking forward to this particular year working together. And, and you know what? It's more meaningful, I think, than it's ever been before. I think it has more meat behind it than it, there ever has been before. I consider this past year to have been more of a roller coaster. Some days, you know, we were all night. Steve was sitting right up in front of that roller coaster. His hands would go up. He was all excited. And then other days, like us, it was whoa. So um, I, I'm very excited. Um, I, I need not say anything about the county executive because you stole my punch. Um, we agree. We don't mean to be insulting. We don't need to be denigrating. But we do need him here. And I'm glad you invited him not just to three committee meetings, but if he can make it, make every one of them. Uh, but uh, you have the right to make a requirement of three, which is fine, or attempt to make a uh, requirement of three. Um, it's really going to be a, a great year. It really is. I'm excited. Um, I'm smiling constantly. Even when people come up and say, congratulations, uh, I heard you got the new position, and I smile. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure it's always going to be smiling, but for now it is. And uh, the last thing that I just want to say to you, Steve, is if you take a look at this table, you are now bookended by two educators. <laughs> Watch out. We're going to be correcting the grammar, and I'll take the math aspect of it. So, but again, I want to, on our behalf as a Democratic caucus, congratulate you, and thank you for what you did last year and for what you're going to do in the future. Thank you, Chris. I, I wasn't at this point going to say anything, um, but since Steve and Chris started down this path, I'll just say it now. Um, I would like to just take a moment to thank the Republican Caucus and Jim for your speech um, and the caucus's support. 
And the way I look at today, today is a, a reorganizational session. And, and I am not going to sit up here and we're not going to beat up on anybody. But I agree with Steve and Chris. Um, this is January 6th and this is a fresh start. That's, that's how I think we look at it. And we make our positions known today. We do it publicly. I think the past year, a lot of discussions have happened privately. And sometimes when conversations happen privately, nothing gets done um, and things are allowed to happen. Um, so I think it's time that we all are on board up here as a legislature and that's why I wanted to speak now and say that I too agree uh, with what's been said so far. Um, we've had our challenges, we certainly have, we're not always going to agree um, and how we handle that is what's going to define us and I think it's been tough for this legislature and for the county executive and the staff as well, I mean it's been tough. Um, but moving forward, I would like to say that we use 2014 as a learning experience. You know, what worked well, what didn't work well, and we go from there this year in 2015. And we work together, all parties, you know, consensus certainly when we can. It's not always going to be that way. It would be a perfect world if, if it did. Um, but we need to, to work harder on that. And I think it will be a great year, Chris. I think we will do better. And, and I, I look forward to working with the county executive and his staff. And again, I'm just going to end by saying this is a fresh start, and that's how we have to move forward. Thank you. Thank you both for saying that. And uh, I'll calm down a little bit more. And um, <laughs> I will say um, from the county exec, we look forward to his recommendations and where he stands on those recommendations, whether it's a sales tax or not, because I'm not going to resurrect the sales tax argument unless there's going to be 14 votes out of here and the county exec's going to sign off on it. And we have an assembly Democrat to carry it forward in Albany and a uh, Senate Republican. Uh, because that might be one of our options that we have to utilize this year. But I'm not going to be the one to bring it forward. We were advised by the county exec's office to, we needed to do it earlier in December to get it on the legislative calendar so we could possibly collect, start collecting in March or April. That's why we did it so early. That's why it was rushed, basically. And, and I know it felt like it was rushed because it was, and that was the reason. But we're looking forward to the county exec's recommendations and where he stands on those recommendations, and, and that'll help us move forward. But thank you for the, uh, Melissa and Chris, yes. No, I apologize. Um, and I, I also wanted to say, Jeff, it's been an absolute pleasure working with you. Um, again, I was gonna say it at the end, but we're on the topic now. And uh, you know, we've talked a lot, and it's always been respectful. And I do want to make it known it has been a pleasure working with you and Chris I look forward to working with you and Michael Amo as well. I'll echo that too. Okay, we're ready to get started. Okay. Are there any referrals, withdrawals, or consents? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, I, re I re request a consent to place on the agenda resolution confirming the appointment of Darcy Heller as Commissioner of the Orange County Department of Social Services uh, by the County Executive. I'll second that. Discussion? No discussion? Okay. Um, legislator, I'm sorry? Without objection? I regretfully object. Okay, is there a second objection? Oh, no, sorry. Okay. We'll do a roll call now, and I guess it's to place the yep. resolution on the agenda. No discussion. Yeah, we can discuss it. Okay. I think, okay, Dennis, Barry, and Jeff. Mr. Chairman, I regretfully objected to this because a lot of what you said at the very beginning is part of the reason that I object to this. First of all, most people know how I feel about consents. But by the same token, I believe that there's a purpose for consents. And I don't believe that that consent purpose is being met today. As a matter of fact, I'm embarrassed to even be speaking because we shouldn't be put in this position. This woman that is being proposed should be approved unanimously by this legislature. And yet here I am objecting to have it placed on the agenda. It's very upsetting. It's very embarrassing to me because it's not about 
Darcy Miller at all. We had a process where our recommendations, the, I'm sorry, the, the county executive's recommendations for department heads comes to the committee. We have a committee process. That's the way the legislature runs. I don't have to tell you, you all know that. And you know how much I feel about it actually following that process. And I've had several of my colleagues from the other side of the aisle agree with me over the years that that process needs to be accomplished. And here we are again at this late date with our feet held to the fire to either approve this or it goes through automatically unless we reject it. And there's not a certain single person sitting on this dais that wants to not approve this appointment. And it's embarrassing to me that we're having this discussion because of the process that was followed. We need to get on board. We need to have these things start coming to the, pro to the, to the legislature at the committee function like they're supposed to and that the proper respect is shown to the legislature by the other elected officials of this county. And I will continue to oppose any of them, as I have in the past, when they do something that is not respectful of the legislature. So unfortunately, I object to having it placed on the agenda. Barry? Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the legislator, let your, legislature is presented today with a consent resolution to appoint a commissioner of social services to a six-year term, which will extend three years beyond any of our current terms. The six-year term is indicative of this being a key position in county government that should be based on the candidate's experience and qualifications. For the legislature to be placed in a position where we have not had the opportunity to move this nomination through the normal committee process is unfair to both the candidate and the legislature and sets a poor precedence for governing this county. I am aware that this process includes candidate review and approval at the state level, and it is comforting to know that the candidate passed that test. That process should not prevent the legislature from carrying out its duties in the appointment of our commissioners. I strongly believe that this consent resolution should not be allowed to be voted on by the legislature until such time as it has followed the normal procedure. Let me conclude by saying that I have the utmost respect for Ms. Miller and her service to the county in her capacity as Commissioner of Mental Health and am confident in her abilities and leadership to continue to effectively serve Orange County in whatever capacity. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. The two last uh, comments were outstanding by my colleagues, and I really can't even improve upon it. I think this is not an appropriate time to approve this consent, and I'm embarrassed as well, because I think the candidate is an outstanding individual who's had a proven record of, of outstanding service for the county. So I don't know of anybody, I want to be very clear about it, because I'm voting not to approve this and put on consent because the county executive bypassed the committee. And it's just, I, I, it just puts us all in a really embarrassing, bad spot. But I'm not gonna go along for the ride. It's as simple as that. I just can't let, I can't be abused. And I feel that that's, that's exactly what this is. The county executive abusing his power. Legislator Amo and then Turnbull. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Obviously, I, I put it forward. I'm going to support it. And I think that, uh, and I do hear what the other, uh, my other legislative says, especially, and uh, Legislator Simmons. Uh, one of the reasons for consent, of course, is, is that of timeliness. And we all know that, and they've alluded to it, but I want to be clear about it here, and I think this is the real unfair point that we have to discuss, is that if we do nothing today, by default, a 40-day period will, 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 will come to an end, and Commissioner Miller will be appointed uh, by default. That's the wrong thing to do for such a great employee of Orange County. We need to stand up and say, this is a really good person who's been with us for years. We've seen her perform in the Department of Mental Health. We've seen her before our committees month after month after month. There's no question about the performance of this individual. 
And I think to let it go by default is not really the right message to give to Commissioner Miller, or is it the right message to give to the 400 staff that she's going to be overseeing, or the staff of the, of the department that she's going to be acting as commissioner in, and all the other employees in this, in this county? We need to tell them that we, the 21 members of the legislature, know who she is and want to get behind her unanimously and support her so that she does a great job for the county and serves so many, help, so many people who need help in this county. We don't want to give a mixed message here because of our disagreement with the county executive. I held that same disagreement. I don't disagree with your, with your opinion about that. But I don't want it to be on Darcy Miller's shoulders. I think that she is an excellent person, and we've seen enough of her. And I don't know what more we're going to find out if we brought her to a committee. And I think we should just dispense of that and vote for her today. Okay, Legislator Turnbull and Legislator Hines. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's, un it's unfortunate the county executive has disregarded the process. Um, I'm looking forward to supporting this uh, candidate. I think Darcy brings, uh, she has her finger on the pulse of the needs of the people of Orange County. I think uh, she has a passionate heart, and I think she brings a unique progressiveness to the table that's seldom seen. So. Uh, for those reasons, important, it, it is important for it to go through a committee so we can have these conversations, you know, and uh, be enthused about it. Uh, and I'm looking forward to that. And Legislator Magnus Nakas, then was it Benelli? Oh, I'm sorry, Kevin, I jumped over you, sorry. You're up. Yeah. Forget the guy that nominated me. Yeah, in a certain way, I guess. <laughs> Uh, I just have some questions, and I, I see the deputy county exec in the audience, and I'm hoping to get some answers that probably would have been answered had it gone through the committee process. And I'm wondering uh, what the starting salary is with respect to the grade, uh, the plan for the mental health department, how long uh, will she serve in both positions, if that's the plan, and is there an additional stipend to her if she's serving in both uh, positions? So I'm wondering if Wayne could come forward and, and answer these questions on behalf of the executive. So that at least when we vote, we have a general idea of what the plans are of the executive branch. And, and I can support it. I agree with every comment that was made on this. Darcy is, is a great worker. I will support her, but I, I just would like Point to have information. questions. Yes. Uh, I don't believe that that's the purpose of this, that, you know, we're, we're debating this. I don't believe that, uh, uh, that the process is, is to, to do that. And I have to, again, say that I object to that. And well, can we can we save Wayne's uh, when we get to the appointment itself? If it make we make it to that, I think it's germane to talk about it then, rather than on the objection. Again, the purpose of the committee is to do exactly what you've just asked to do. I agree. And I have heard a number of my colleagues say that they have a number of questions about this, not about the person, but about the procedure, about the money, about how it's going to happen. All, the, all different kinds of questions that really needed to be vetted at a committee meeting that had nothing to do with the candidate. And I can't say that strongly enough, that this is not the appropriate place to be doing this confirmation uh, process. It needs to be done at the committee meeting, and I fully object. Um, what I'll do is, if, if the objections get overruled, or we both down the objection, then I'll ask Wayne to come up when we get to the appointment, okay? Uh, Legislator Magnus Dacus, and then Shannon, and then Katie, okay? I think Shannon was ready. Doesn't matter, right? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm embarrassed here. Embarrassing. I agree with most everything that everyone has said so far. Um, the executive not only has not shown proper respect to this legislative body by his actions, what he's done is he has not shown proper respect to his own candidate. There's a process that we have to go through, and everyone talked about it. And I'm embarrassed if I ever hear that we should just forget the process and do something different. Why don't we just throw away our legislative manuals and our procedures? Why don't we just throw away our Constitution while we're at it? Do whatever we feel, whenever we feel. I've always said in the four years, all the trouble we had in the past administration was because the process was never followed. 
And that's why we had to take specific actions against that process that was done the wrong way. We shouldn't be going down a road where we're going down the wrong process. And again, has nothing to do with the candidates. I've had the honor and privilege of overseeing a committee, the Health and Mental Health Committee, where I've worked with this particular candidate who is the commissioner of the mental health department. And I have no doubt the person is qualified and I want to vote for the person when the procedure was done the proper way and we were at the point where that vote would have been made at the proper time. This is not the way to be doing things. So I cannot support this going on by consent. If we do it this time, we might as well forget about our rules and procedure in this legislative body and say we can do anything we want at any time and I don't think that's the way government should work. Shannon. Dorsey, Ms. Miller, Commissioner. <laughs> um, as a social worker, I hope and believe you understand the importance of good process um, and good government, and it's the only reason I can't support the consent I wholeheartedly believe you would do an outstanding job as DSS commissioner. Um, and one of the very saddest parts of this process is that Ms. Miller will not be given the opportunity to receive the praise she deserves for an outstanding career, um, a career in public service to the very neediest in our society. Um, and I really wanted just to take the opportunity to be on the record in case this doesn't come back again and it just defaults to her service to say that I support her and believe that she will serve the people in our community who are struggling without staying care and service um, and we are well served by her in our community and thank you Katie I believe the two wrongs don't make a right and that's why I seconded this being put on by consent were we placed in a very last-minute situation absolutely do I agree with a lot that's been said here yes but I cannot stand by and allow us to sink to the same level that we're accusing the executive branch of doing, and at that point, risking the reputation of a very professional woman in our Commissioner Darcy Miller. While we all understand that, and we can say, well, it's not our fault, we are falling into the same trap. We are placed in this position, and while we will understand that we're trying to send a very clear message, when everyone leaves here today, the public's not going to understand that message. The staff isn't going to understand that message. And we're going to have a commissioner that deserves all of the support and the applause from this legislature, and she may go without that. And what, at the end of the day, have we done? So that's why I agree with the consent, and I'm just looking at it a little differently than my colleagues, while I respect each and every one of them. Minority Leader Ekes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I would like to start by thanking Mr. Simmons. I uh, can't help but to see your emotion in this and I thank you for bringing it forward because I and I believe many of us believe you are absolutely correct in this and I too believe in a lot that is going on um, but the only thing that we have is the process nothing else uh, alluding to what Mr. Agnostock has said if we don't have the process, we have nothing at all. I think also a lot of us like to use the word transparency. That's really what we're reeling against. This was completely untransparent. It, it, and that's what we are seeking now. And it's wonderful to see all sides really coming together, which is what we just talked about moments ago as we reorganized and put this legislature together. As far as the staff and Darcy Miller understanding, um, 
Maybe you're right, we were put in this position. But it doesn't leave us only this option. If we truly feel that the staff and Darcy are not going to understand, I guess we better get out there and meet every one of them to let them know that we do understand. And I'll be the first one to say, I'll do that. I don't really believe I have to do it with Darcy. I've been in private meetings with Darcy on a different level than anybody else here. She is absolutely magnificent. She's wonderful. And I want her, after discussion about this job, to have it, because she wants it. And as far as the recognition and the kudos go, I think if this does happen by default, I don't think you're going to see anybody who's going to get a better standing ovation next month as we recognize this new commissioner than what she's going to get. And I think it will go forward positively from there. But we do, unfortunately, have to take a stand. Or we're not legislators. Here. Thank you. Melissa and then Dennis. I don't, I could probably count on one hand how many times I've been up on the stage and, and haven't been sure how I'm going to vote. Um, a couple things I would like to share and, and um, keeping in the back of the mind some things that we discussed in, in our caucus last night. Several months ago, and I apologize, I don't remember the month, but leadership was called by the county executive in a meeting. Um, and we sat, it was Jeff, myself, it was Michael Amo, Darcy was there, um, I believe Wayne was there, and Langdon. And at that time, uh, the county exec uh, unfortunately had another commitment, he wasn't there, and, and that was okay, he was well represented. Um, and the question to leadership is, was at that time, you know, the county executive is thinking about appointing Darcy Miller as acting commissioner of social services, but we would like to know what the legislators, how they feel about that. So they were asking the leaders to go back and speak to their caucuses about that. Um, I know that I can only speak of what happened after that. With me, I made a call to every one of my caucus members that afternoon and that evening. And at that time, every single Republican legislator said, yes, we support the county executive doing it on his own, you know, appointing Darcy Miller as acting commissioner. Um, and then we didn't hear anything for quite a while, and that's fine, things happened, there was a process that had to be followed. I think though, what started to happen and, and what I'm getting from the caucus last night, because sitting here as one legislator, it doesn't make a difference what the party is, you've heard a lot here today from different parties, is that it, what's hard for me is, is I, like everybody else, I, I support Darcy. I was practically congratulating you at the end of last year, which is just a few days ago. Um, because in my mind, there's no doubt you can do the job. But in listening to the caucus and, and then putting on my other hat as majority leader, um, you know, sometimes you have to listen to the majority of the caucus and, and the focus became the process, not Darcy Miller. So what I'm trying to get at is I think when we had those, that meeting and the Republicans said, yes, we would support Steve if he wants to go ahead and do that, Yes, absolutely. She'd be great. You know, as acting, and then we'll talk about it. Um, and what happened? It never came back for that talk, and, and that's what everybody's saying is the committee process. Um, so I'm going back and forth, and I, I don't know if anybody up here can answer this question. And if it can be answered right now, it would it would define my answer very quickly on how I'm going to vote. Um, was there a reason why? this is here as consent and why it didn't go through the committee process. A lot of times what comes up here is time sensitive. Um, and, and I'm just wondering if anybody up here, I know we don't want to get a discussion on the outside. Um, Michael, you, you want to address that? I was part of that meeting and I know Mr. Berkman was there as well, I believe, and we, we met and we had that discussion. That you were, and, and that was where we were going. Uh, what I know to be the timeline on it is that I learned uh, from the county executive's office that um, on December the 15th, the term of the acting commissioner by our charter, I believe, in law, 
had by the Michigan State law had to expire. So they needed to move on, and they couldn't reappoint. They had to move. And at that point, all our committees had transpired. I got the rent. We were already gone through committee process because we had them early in December because of the budget project. Remember, our main budget meeting was 18. This was like the 15th, and they, they had to make a decision quickly. And it was at that point they, they, had, they scrambled to have a discussion and then make that, make that announcement. And that announcement was, I'm going to say, maybe uh, seven, ten days before the Christmas holiday. But I can remember the exact date. That would be the 20th or something. So it, it, the, all our committees had expired. There was no option unless we convened a new committee to, to have that hearing. Uh, and so they made the appointment because law required they had to replace the acting commissioner with a new commissioner. And that was the decision. They did contact me as a chairman of human services and get my input. And I did contact Darcy. And I did call Mr. Mr. Ekus about it and explain to him what was going on before we even went into the politics. And Melissa and the chairman about it. Uh, well, I did try to explain what was going on in the, tenth, the timeline. And then I was told that, that because of our own charter, we have to appoint, make this decision within 40 days of that appointment date, or by default it would be appointed. And we were then instructed that we would have to bring it on by consent. I was called by the legislative office on Monday and, and asked to if I would be the person to give that consent. And I, that's what I read to you before. So the process was followed in the best opportunity that I think we had. Was it unfortunate? Yeah, I think maybe the budget got in the way, a bunch of other things got in the way that maybe confused us. But the actual trigger date when, when the commissioner, the county executive made the decision was after all the committees were complete. Yes. Was it you done? Yeah, almost, uh, almost. Um, and I appreciate. I thank you, Michael. I appreciate that. Um, I'm just so so. That what I think I'm understanding is that that position of, of the acting commissioner currently expired or ended on December 15th, which is my understanding that that date was known though for months that that was going to happen on December 15th. Okay. Um, then I do want to say one more thing because I, I was back and forth. You know, I told some colleagues before this started, I'm, I'm going to vote yes, you know, to have it put on by consent. Um, but, you know, a lot of times, and it's healthy to come here sometimes and, and be unsure and listen to the debate. Um, and this is one of those times for me. So I'm going to end my comments by saying that I support the individual, Darcy Miller. A hundred percent. I have from when we met months ago. I support you. However, um, it, it seems clear to me at this point that it could have come through committees. Um, and, and because of that, you know, I support consents that we have no choice. We have to do it. it. You know, it couldn't come through committees. But it sounds to me as if this could have. So I will support the objection. And I just want to let my colleagues know, because I had told a few of you that I would be voting the other way. So I want to be clear uh, to you before I vote. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to clarify a couple things. First of all, I couldn't disagree with two of my colleagues any more than, than I do, and this doesn't usually happen. I usually am uh, very agreeable with the way that they see things. But uh, Ms. Monasek just, just alluded to the fact that this didn't have to be a consent, that this has been going on, as we all know, for at least six months, at least six months, if not longer. And the other thing that I have to say is that this is not the last recourse. As unenviable as it is, we can still have another meeting. We can still do the committee meetings. And we can still vote on this if you feel that strongly about it. Or you can just acquiesce and let it, let it go ahead and, and, and time out and become by default. So this is not the last recourse. This is not the last bite at the apple. So please, people, don't be telling people that because it's accurately inaccurate. It's factually inaccurate. The other thing is, it's very more important to me, and Chris, I want to thank you for some of the things that you just said. And, uh, more importantly, we're not dropping what we're doing in, to another bad behavior. Very importantly, one of the things that we're doing is not setting precedent, which to me, again, is very, very important that, okay, it happened this way, next month, the month after, the month after that, I don't want to sit here and say, well, we did it in January, we did it January 6th, 
What's your objection? You already set precedent. Let's forget about the process. Let's just wing it. Let's forget about all the committee meetings altogether. And I'll tell you what, we don't have to come in here but once a month and sit at this table for about 24 hours straight and discuss every issue on this floor. I don't think that's the way the process is supposed to work. And I, for one, am not going to vote for that process. And I am very fearful about setting precedent. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's set up a Duke. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, a lot of stuff has been said here today. Quite frankly, Mr. Raymond, you... Uh, quite frankly, you mentioned some people that you talked to uh, in regards to it. You know what? Somebody should have talked to me because as the chairman of personnel, I could have convened a special meeting if the county executive had the respect for this legislature legislature, he could have called me himself and said, listen, I made a blunder. I need some support here. As chairman of personnel, he could have called the meeting. We wouldn't be going through this today. So what I'll say is, Darcy, uh, you know, I'll apologize for what's happened as the chairman of personnel. I say to you that you've heard everybody's uh, support for you, and uh, I'll make it, if, if possible, that we have, if I am still chairman of personnel, that we do convene at our first meeting, and we will have a Darcy come in to us as the appointed commissioner, talk to us so we can confirm her appropriately, regardless of what the county executive has already forced on us. So I won't be voting for this consent today, because I think we still have the ability, like Mr. Simmons said, to make it right. Thank you. It would require a special session, but we could maybe even do it at our next session, regular session, symbolically, because I'm sure she'll sail through committees. But I, I'm going to I'm going to vote for the objection, knowing that Darcy will be confirmed even if we object and don't vote on it here today because the time frame will run out. Um, and it, it's, it's a bit, bittersweet thing. Um, this was brought up six months ago. Originally when we interviewed for Social Services Commissioner, it was very democratic. We had Curly involved, myself, Katie, and Michael Amo, uh, Mr. Parker, and two other candidates. And Mr. Parker decided to stay in Sullivan County. But that same process should have been followed. Um, I, we discussed this, Michael, in uh, the county exec's office, it probably was six months ago, right around there, or it was Langdon's office. I can't remember which office. It was Langdon's or the county exec's. It was Steve's office, okay. And uh, we should have followed that process. Even if we had a, a, a last minute thing, uh, Michael call, Amel called me uh, just before Christmas and told me about the dilemma with Ann Caldwell, and I said I didn't have a problem with Darcy. And I don't have a problem with Darcy. Um, but, you know, we could have convened uh, Mike Amel. Mike and Agnes Takis and Mike Badu, three Mikes, um, to interview or, or somebody and just go through the process. Um, if it weren't Darcy, we'd be here today and there'd probably be 75 to 100 percent chance that we wouldn't confirm the other choice. We know you, we have confidence in you. If there's anything, think there's going to be any blemish on your resume at all, Rodney will keep an extra tape for you and he can play it. <laughs> you know? I mean, you've got more compliments today. and. Uh, you're our choice, but it's just the process that we object to. So even if the objection is upheld today, you'll still be the commissioner. So, okay? All right, so we're going to take a vote on the objection, and a yes vote is to uphold the objection, correct? A yes vote. Resolution on the agenda. Okay, so a no vote is to, to not place it on the agenda. Okay. Okay, so roll call. Bonasek? No. Ekis? No. Amo? Yep. Anagnostakis? No. Benton? No. Berkman? No. Benelli? Yeah. Cheney? No. Dill I'm sorry, Dillard's absent. DeSalvo? No. Hines? Yes. Hemnins? No. Kulasek? No. Paduk? No. Ruskevich? No. Simmons? No. Sullivan? No. Turnbull? No. Bureau? No. Wong? No. Brescia? Three eyes, 17 no's. And I hear it now, I will ask uh, Chairman Amo and Chairman Paduk to put it on their agendas with full uh, betting, and you'll be fine. Okay. <laughs> okay, where are we? Number one.
Finally. Thanks, Mr. Kulisek. Legislator Simmons, resolution adopting the legislative manual for the County of Orange and the rules of order and procedure for the Orange County Legislature as previously amended pursuant to section 2.02A of the Orange County Charter, section 153 of the County Law and Article 2C1E, Article 3 Introduction and Article 4E1A and B of said legislative manual. Second. Discussion? Uh, legislator, uh, Minority Leader Ekes. Thank you. Um, I don't disagree with this resolution at all, talking about that there were no proposed amendments and so on, but I do believe that there are a number of us sitting up here who have problems with some of the rules, some of the order, some of the procedure of what takes place with and in our Orange County, Orange County Legislature. So I'm just taking this moment to note that uh, I am hoping uh, that the Rules Committee, Rules Enactments and Intergovernmental Relations Committee will actually bother to uh, take some time and recognize some proposed amendments that may come forward from both sides and consider them. And uh, then in the future, we can talk about perhaps amending this manual. Uh, and I just want to restate that uh, we can amend this manual at any time. So, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to that happening. Okay. Um, I don't want to speak for my successor or, or my predecessors, but, you know, we did that. I was chairman of rules, and we did that. can do it any time throughout the year. Um, I know Dennis is going to want to say something to this, but I would say, suggest that uh, we wait a couple of months until the ethics discussion is finalized before we put this on on rules plate, but uh, yeah, we can always do that, and we've done it over the last few years. So, Legislator Senate. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Ekes, you have my you know full assurance that if I'm the chair for rules, that uh, we'll definitely have no problem putting that, as any time I've ever been requested to put something on rules, we've done it, so definitely, definitely look at it, not a problem. Thank you. Okay, uh, roll call. Honestly? Ekes? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? DeSalvo? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulisek? Paduk? Ruskevich? Simmons? Sullivan? Turnbull? Vero? Wong? And Brescia. 20 ayes. Resolution number two. Legislator Simmons, resolution establishing legislative calendar for 2015, pursuant to Article 2, C1F of the Legislative Manual. Well, just, legislator Nagdastakis, I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Boy, what a start to uh, 2015. Uh, I wanted to, first of all, say congratulations to the Chairman for his appointment. I think you should be congratulated. You're happy to be aboard again, right? Thank you. <laughs> Um, Melissa, congratulations on your appointment. You've done a great job, and I know that you'll continue to do that. And to Mr. Ekes, I want to say congratulations to him. I think, uh, I think on your shoulders fall uh, probably the, the hardest duties. You represent almost one half of this legislative body. And uh, I don't think any of us will disagree that we are in extraordinary times right now. And I think this legislative body has to step forward as we just did earlier today, and as we did during the budgetary process, we have to step forward and show leadership for this county, maybe like it's never had to do before in the past. So uh, in the spirit of cooperation, I know that this particular item is always a concern of yours. I know in the past you've, uh, you've wanted maybe three night sessions, and at this point we have one. I want to offer um, my support for your wanting more night sessions. I want to in a moment make an amendment that we include an additional night session to this uh, schedule to make it two for the year and I would hope all my Republican colleagues in that spirit of cooperation uh, unanimously agree with that move and I would hope the Democrat caucus says this is the way we should be doing government moving forward so I will make a motion to make an amendment to this calendar to place on the August 6th 2015 legislative meeting, making it a 7 o'clock p.m. meeting instead of a 3.30 meeting, and I would hope someone would second that. Hey. Discussion? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Uh, did I say earlier that one of the legislators told me that I may as well be chairman because nobody else wants it? <laughs> okay, surprised you a little bit. That was your Christmas present, Chris. <laughs> okay, we got a second, third, fourth, fifth discussion. Rosie? I'm just wondering if you would consider changing it from August to another month because they're both summer um, evenings. And whereas, I don't know if you're going to get as much attendance in the summer as you would during any other season throughout the year. And it might be good if we're, if we're going to follow attendance to see if it'll work, if we should continue it, if it does pass. We might want to have two different times of the year as a measurement. I suggested that last night too, Roseanne, and I was totally ignored. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I'm just not going to okay? If I could just answer answer that. There, there is a uh, uh, madness behind my logic. Um, again, this body can do anything we want. Hopefully we can cooperate and work together and, and, and move very quickly. But I thought um, the summer month, uh, for an evening session because a lot of, I know from experience, a lot of senior citizens don't like to be out driving uh, when it's dark. So uh, the, the inclement weather, the potential for bad weather during other parts of the year along with the darkness might prohibit certain uh, portion of the population that would like to come out in the evening meeting and you're actually defeating the purpose of having the evening meeting. So I would respectfully uh, hope we would keep it during that uh, summertime and the options were the June 4th meeting, which is a Senior Citizens Day, and that's the reason it's in the afternoon, because they like to come out in, in the daytime. And the other month that is adjoining, uh, adjacent to the July month, would be the August month. That, that was the reason behind August 6th in my mind. Dennis? I was going to say the same thing, because I know even my wife has a terrible time driving at night anymore as uh, your eyesight changes. And uh, Michael, what about May? At least it would be a lot, a lot more uh, light, because obviously the, the time is changing, and, and also I'm, I'm talking about the day is getting longer, and you know that might be a. I thought that would be good that, too. That might be a May okay with everybody. May May seventh. But I, no, I would I would leave it to Michael. You know, he's the one that's making the motion. Yeah, yeah I've, and I've just, made just suggesting that to him is all. Thank you, Mr. Simmons. I yes, I've made the motion. If uh, I don't know that we're doing this the right way, but. If I don't hear people objecting to the May month, I certainly won't object to the May month. And I, unless I hear objection right now, will change my motion. Uh, I will change it from the August 6, 2015 meeting uh, to the May 7, 2015 meeting to be at 7 p.m. And maybe someone can second that motion. Okay, one other problem. I, was, I fell asleep at the switch today. I was supposed to call Melissa to ask Rob Sassy April, they're not in school That's at that time. So we can't do the morning youth and government on April 10th, I don't think. Well, that was, no. You settled it? They are in school. Uh-huh. So maybe we better do March or? Can we leave that one open? Okay, so we're going to have to know fairly, well, we can change it, but um, everybody that tries to put their calendars together during the year, okay, but it's not going to be April for the morning session because the children aren't in school, right? No, I, I gave them that day. Legislator Simmons? Just a suggestion. Uh, I... I I don't think that there's a better way to actually uh, acquaint our youth with many different situations than having them there when we do other things. And what about the June meeting where it's actually senior citizen, where we're actually honoring the senior citizen? Uh, could, could, we, could we do that? They said it. All right, can we, we can always change this. Let's okay. month, next month, let's Thank look you. at it and change it. Okay. okay. Let's do it as let's do it as it is now. With uh, do we need a separate motion, or we can just make the motion all in one with the uh, okay. for men? Uh, that's part of the motion, right? So let's make sure we have it here. It, we're not going to. You're withdrawing your motion for August 6th, uh, 2015. That will remain at 3:30 p.m. 
and you're uh, changing your amendment uh, to the resolution to make the May 7th, 2015 meeting to 7 p.m. Correct, and I, I would think you would take a vote on the amendment and then a vote on the full Correct. original. Okay, we'll take a vote on the amendment. Is there a second? Yeah, we got a second. Okay. All right, so okay. the amendment. Roll call on the amendment. Bonasek? Yes. Bikas? Yes. Emo? Yes. Menagnostakis? Yes. Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? DeSalvo? Ikas? Hemnitz? Kulasek? Padu? Ruskevich? Simmons? Sullivan? Turnbull? Vera? Wong? And Brescia? 20 eyes. 21, I got to go twice, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now the, the legislative calendar, and with, knowing that we're going to have to change April probably down the road. Yeah. On the calendar itself, as amended. Roll call. As amended. Yeah. With the May 7th night session. Yes. Thank you. I didn't I'm going to try to add another night meeting, please. <laughs> <laughs> Baby steps. No, I was going to ask for 11 7 o'clock meetings, but uh, Mike jumped in there and he brought tears to my eyes. I thank you very much, uh, Mike, uh, for doing that. Um, this is fine. I thank you. I think it'll work out. I think in the future we'll see that it is uh, uh, just as appropriate, if not more appropriate, to have uh, evening meetings. And I would like to say that I personally spoke with Mr. Newhouse, and he was actually, I wouldn't say stunned, but he was uh, in, in disarray that we don't have all of our meetings in the evening. Uh, and that's personally, I spoke with him about that. So uh, that might be something that we need to talk to him about also, especially if we want him to attend all our meetings. Yeah, I'll take that to heart if he's going to come at night. Yeah, yeah. So I just want to do that. But the uh, I did bring uh, the notification of uh, the April 10th meeting. Um, I can guarantee you that uh, the Newburgh and Large City School District is out that week, and we go by the Orange Holster Bosey's calendar. Uh, but leaving it as tentative is fine. Um, if if uh, so most of the schools, all the other schools are in, that's fine. If not, I'm sure you can change that. I do want to. I think to go along with what Mr. Simmons said is uh, whether we do it when senior citizens are here, most importantly, we do it when we can get the best participation from the students and the teachers, uh, you know, whenever we do it. So uh, that's why I had mentioned about that. So thank you. I just wanted to uh, comment on Youth and Government Day in general uh, because we've had this problem the last several years where uh, schools are out of session. Some schools are and some are in session. Uh, I believe that the April uh, meeting would have actually been the week before, uh, but Jean actually has to call Rachel Wilson um, and uh, she works with Bob Sa Rob Sassy. Um, so we get the date from them. We work around that schedule. Um, sometimes they, they want to push it out until like end of April, and we're like, no, that's not when we have our, our session. So we've moved up actually the April uh, legislative session uh, to accommodate the government. Uh, but we've seen in the last couple of years, uh, we don't really have the students uh, to, to participate in the mock, uh, legis the uh, mock uh, legislative session. So. Um, you know, hopefully Rachel and uh, Rob Stassi can work it out, but we, we sort of work off their calendar. So. And, and it's not only us, um, it's the coordinating the school buses and uh, the luncheon, so there's a lot involved. We're, we're a very small piece of the puzzle here. Okay, Dennis will probably put it on rules for further discussion. Okay. Uh, roll, did we get the roll call on this? No, okay, roll call on the calendar. Mm -hmm. As it currently amended. Bonasek? Yes. Ikis? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulasek? Paduk? Ruskevich? Simmons? Sullivan? Turnbull? Vera? Wong? Brescia? 20 eyes. Okay. Number of resolution number three. Designation by members of the county legislature representing the Republican Party of Newspapers to publish the concurrent resolutions of the state legislature and election notices to be published in 2015 pursuant to section 214 of county law. Second. Receive and file. Resolution number four. 
designation by members of the Orange County Legislature re representing the Democratic Party of newspapers to publish the concurrent resolutions of the state legislature and election notices to be published in 2015 pursuant to section 214 of the county law. Second. CD5. Resolution 5. Designation by members of the county legislature representing the Republican Party of newspapers to publish all local laws, notices, and other matters required by law to be published in 2015 pursuant to subdivision 2 of section 214 of the county law. Second. Receive and file. Resolution 6. Designation by members of the county legislature representing the De Democratic Party of newspaper to publish all local laws, notices, and other matters required by law to be published in 2015, pursuant to subdivision two of section 214 of the county law. Second. Okay, we're gonna, resolution seven, we're gonna need a roll call on, so. You wanna read the resolution, Gene? Legislator Simmons, resolution designating the newspapers published within the county as official newspapers for the publication of all local laws, notices, and other matters required by law to be published in 2015, pursuant to subdivision two of section 214 of the county law. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Ekes? Yes. Amo? Yep. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Ben Berkman? No. Benelli, Jeannie, DeSalvo, e I'm sorry. Come on. Lisa's in line here. Hines, Chemnitz, Kulasek, Paduk, Ruskevich, Simmons, Sullivan, Turnbull, Biro, Wong, Fresha. 19 eyes, one no. I, I just want to read the newspapers uh, so that it's on the record. Um, it's the Sentinel, published in well uh, Valesgate, New York, the Warwick Advertiser Photo News, published in Chester, New York, News of the Highlands, Inc., published in Cornwall, New York, the Gazette, published in Middletown, New York, Times Community Newspapers, published in Newburgh, New York, and Hudson Valley Press, published in Newburgh, New York. Okay. Um... Would all the legislators please stay afterward to sign the proper designations? The, who's got them? Kelly? I have them. Gene's got them. Okay. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Beautiful. Thank you again.